Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about SKSE64, what it is, what it does, and why you want it. SKSE, though an odd-seeming acronym, stands for Skyrim Script Extender. Part of what that means is that you, as a player, probably won't actually get to see most of what it does. However, it is an essential tool for modders. What this means is that while there are a large number of mods you can download and use just fine without it, downloading this tool will allow you to use mods that change the game in ways you've never dreamed of. We'll start out by talking about how to download it. The first thing you'll need to do is navigate to the SKSE website, not hosted on the Skyrim Nexus. The address for this website is, of course, skse.silverlock.org. Now, this simple HTML website is where you will be downloading SKSE. If you are using the Skyrim Special Edition, you will want the current Special Edition build. You can download it here as a 7-zip archive. Once you've downloaded the archive, you need to extract it. There are several tools you can use to do this, and if you don't already have one, 7-zip is easy to use and free to download online. You want to open up the file and extract it to whatever location works for you. Once this is done, you will want to open up the now extracted folder. Once you've opened up your SKSE archive, you need to find your Skyrim game folder, which for those of you who are new is in your Steam folder, in Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim Special Edition. Then, what you want to do is quite simple. You want to copy all the files in this folder, and then paste them into your Skyrim folder. Now, while it may seem like you're done, there's still a little bit left to do. The first thing you're going to want to do is close out of your mod organizer, and then restart it. Once you've done this, you should notice a new SKSE executable in your dropdown. From now on, you will want to run the game using this. Running this will actually launch the game just as if you used the Skyrim Special Edition option. However, this will run the game through SKSE, providing you access to the mods with far more options. Now, once you've installed SKSC, you do need to test to make sure it works. To do that, once you're in the game, just come over to your System Settings tab and check and make sure your SKSE information is displayed down here. Alright, now that we have it installed, you would think we would be done, but unfortunately there is a little bit of a roadblock. You see, SKSE is dependent on your version of Skyrim Special Edition. The problem is that Skyrim Special Edition is updated every once in a while, and when it's updated, you have to wait until SKSE is similarly updated for you to be able to use it again. As you can imagine, this could be quite frustrating to have many of your mods unplayable for often days at a time. Luckily, there's a way around this problem. All you need to do is copy your Skyrim SE.exe in your Skyrim game folder, and then paste it somewhere else for safekeeping. Once you've done that, if Skyrim Special Edition updates and your SKSE becomes broken, you can simply replace your current SE.exe file with the one you backed up. This method does work great, however, you should take note that if you have Creation Club content, it may interfere with some of the things from that, so be aware of that. At the same time, it is typically preferred to keep up to date whenever possible, especially once SKSE has been updated, so you may use it with the current version, as this current version will always be slightly more stable. At any time, if you decide you want to revert your Skyrim Special Edition to the current version, you can simply right-click on it, go to Properties, and then verify your local files. 
Now that we have SKSE successfully installed, I'm going to talk about Sky UI. After all, SKSE seems to have been quite a bit of work to install, and frankly, haven't been a lot of results yet. Sky UI is made for PC players who find the typical Skyrim user interface, frankly, hard to deal with. It replaces many of the frustrations with, hopefully, useful features. Now, while well, the Skyrim Special Edition basic user interface doesn't have a huge number of issues, it can often be frustrating to work with. For example, things like the scroll wheel with using a mouse can be a bit awkward, and equipping and unequipping items can often be harder than first expected, especially if you're not playing with a controller, as the user interface seems to be have been designed for console players and people using controllers. The spell system also tends to suffer, especially at higher levels once you have several spells, as this can result in a lot of scrolling just to find the spell you're currently looking for, which, especially in high tension situations, can be quite the hindrance. Once you have SkyUI installed, you should immediately see a difference. The user interface is much nicer to look at, and there are helpful icons on the side to help you find out what each thing in your inventory is. There are nice icons at the top that mimic the categories of the original user interface, and each particular little type has its own modifiers, and all the information that it shows on there is sortable. That is, you can sort by each type of thing for each category you're in. This is very helpful. There are even more you can enable at the top, such as this helpful value by weight list. Sorting by this list will allow you to find out what things in your inventory weigh the least, but are worth the most. And these are only the type specific ones. There are sorting options specific to each one. If you're still having trouble finding things, there's a helpful filter bar that will even update live as you type. This is very useful for finding the things you're looking for. Don't worry, the inventory isn't the only thing that's gotten a facelift. The magic system is much nicer to look at now, especially if you have large numbers of spells. There are still the icons at the top, this time corresponding to the schools of magic, and all your spells, powers, shouts, and active effects. Each of these still have things such as the filter bar and new options to sort by which is very useful for trying to find that one specific spell of a school level or what you can still cast with your low magic. But maybe you need to find your way somewhere. The map has also gotten a bit of an overhaul with several interesting new features that can be helpful. For example, there's a new find location setting that gives you a list of all the places you know of and still has that useful filter bar for finding exactly where you need to go. But maybe there's something you're not a huge fan of. Maybe you want to change some of the settings. Sky UI has a whole new system in built into it. It will read any mods you have installed and give you mod configuration options for most of them. This is a very useful tool and Sky UI has built itself into this system. From here, you can change all sorts of settings. Maybe you want to change the font size because you're playing in front of a TV or using a controller. Maybe you don't like what the icons look like. You can change them to a different theme, for example. There are several very interesting and well done ones. You can also change whether or not they're colored. There are active effects, which will choose what displays on the screen when you have, for example, something summoned. And there are groups, which I'll get to in a moment. You'd be surprised how much work it is selling. The favorites stuff. menu has also gotten a bit of an overhaul, with it looking much better. There are some basic categories you can sort through, with icons like the other sections, and hotkeys have now been expanded quite usefully. Groups are one of the most powerful new features. This allows you to take multiple items that you have favorited and put them into their own little groups. You can put several different items of differing types all into a group, and then once you are out playing the game, you can very powerfully equip all of those things with a single button press. This 
has quite a few interesting applications. As far as SkyUI installation goes, it's fairly simple. As long as you have SKSE installed, the first thing you need to do is go to Skyrim Nexus. SkyUI should not be hard to locate. Once you have it pulled up, as before, always make sure to read the description. In this case, there's not much of a description, so I will attempt to explain it as best I can. Download with Mod Manager, and it will make sure that you have SKSE64 installed. Once you've confirmed that, you can begin the download. Once the mod is installed, you can double click on it and install in the usual manner. Make sure it's enabled over here, make sure it's enabled in the program, and should be good to go. Well, that's it for today. Next time we'll talk about load order, what it is, and why you need Loot, the load order optimization tool to maintain a peak modding setup. Thanks for watching and see you next time.